Hello everyone, and welcome to another video tutorial for Lightarama S5. In today's video, we'll be talking about advanced AC channel commands in the Lightarama sequencer. If you're new to sequencing and haven't watched our video on basic AC channel commands, be sure to check out that video first. In this video, we'll be discussing the toggle, fill, chase, and intensity actions, as well as how to make modifications to foreground and background effects. For these four commands, you can either treat them like the create action where effects are applied when you click, or you can stay with select and use keyboard shortcuts. Our first effect is toggle. Toggle will flip where your effects are active, meaning everything that's on in this section will turn off and the background will turn on. The keyboard shortcut for toggle is G. Keep in mind that this command is meant to turn the background areas fully on. It's not going to create the opposite of your foreground effects, meaning that if we toggle this area with down ramps, it's still just going to turn the background on. Next is the fill command. To fill between a section, hold down the mouse to select an area and release to fill between. Or you can select an area with your mouse and use the keyboard shortcut F. You can also use the fill command to go from the previous effect to zero intensity, or off. The effect will end at the rightmost timing mark of your selection. The third action is chase, which is commonly used when sequencing. To create a standard chase effect, select the first cell of the chase and click and drag to where you want the chase to end and then release your mouse button. The keyboard shortcut to create a chase is H. You're not limited to one cell's worth of effects for chase commands either. You can select multiple cells worth of data to create unique chase effects across your props. The chase command will automatically determine if you're trying to chase across rows or props, but you can force it to do one or the other by going into the chase command dropdown and then to row mode. You can also uncheck the parameter that keeps a chase on the same type of row. By default, a chase will erase any data across the area the chase is taking place. However, if you come back to the chase command dropdown and uncheck clear selection first, you can keep the effects in the background and layer the new chase on top. You can also get to a shortcut of the chase command menu by pressing shift H on your keyboard. The intensity function allows you to change an effect over a range instead of per effect. For example, if we take these four on commands and use a down ramp slope command for our intensity action, the entire area will fade down from 100 to 0% instead of the ramp occurring per effect. Next we'll move to basic foreground effect changes, which can be found in the right click menu of the sequencer. The first two options are similar to the intensity action we just learned. The next four are what you'll use most often. These are directly related to which values are in the range area of your toolbar. You can fade each effect up or down, or raise or lower the effects to the maximum and minimum values. We'll change these to a ramp up as an example. You can also change the start or end values of an effect by using the lower and raise intensity commands. Lower to max intensity changes the beginning value of your effect to match your range and raise to minimum intensity changes the end. Lastly, you can use the bottom options to manually change intensity values by a specific percent. The final topic of this video is background commands. Similar to foreground commands, we'll reach this menu by right-clicking in the sequencer grid. Selecting any of these options will place the respective commands in the empty cells. Keep in mind that you can only do this once per area. Commands become part of the foreground when placed, meaning there are no more background areas left for effects. If you create a background effect you don't like, just press Ctrl Z on your keyboard to undo. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.